The Russian film company Mosfilm has donated 50 pieces of military equipment stored in warehouses to the needs of the Russian occupation forces. The statement was made by Mosfilm CEO Karen Shaknazarov during a meeting with Vladimir Putin in the Kremlin. He detailed that in 2023, the film company handed over 28 T-55 tanks, 8 PT-76 amphibious light tanks, 6 armoured personnel carriers and 8 tractors to the Russian armed forces. The equipment was used as a prop for filming movies and TV shows and also used as entertainment for tourists. It was stored at the Mosfilm facility in the town of Krasnoznamensk, near Moscow. It is worth noting that as of today, PT-76 amphibious light tanks have not been spotted in the combat zone, but given the growing shortage of armoured vehicles in the Russian armed forces and the decommissioning of other outdated armoured vehicles, such as the BTR-50, this is quite possible, according to Militani. The Russian army is actively using Soviet T-55 stroke T-54 medium tanks in combat operations against the armed forces of Ukraine as artillery, fire support vehicles and infantry support. It should be reminded that the return of T-54 and T-55 tanks to service for the Russian army was announced in March 2023. At that time, the conflict intelligence team published photos of a train with these tanks heading from the far eastern part of Russia. According to SIT, this echelon departed from the city of Arseniev, which houses the 1,295th Central Tank Reserve and Storage Base. According to the Oryx Osint service, the Russians lost at least 13 T-55 stroke T-54 tanks of various modifications during the fighting. The Soviet T-54 and T-55 tanks are commonly referred to under two indexes as two different models, but in fact, they are part of the same line of combat vehicles. These tanks were constantly modernized and had design changes while conceptually remaining the same tank. The T-54 stroke T-55 can be distinguished from the later T-62 by a characteristic gap between the front first and second support rollers. Other distinctive features include the muzzle compensator at the end of the D-10T gun barrel and the specific convex radiator cap on the turret roof. Currently, there are three armored vehicle repair plants in Russia, but only one of them specializes in repairing vehicles such as the T-55 and the T-62. This is the 103rd armoured repair plant, so the vehicles will be delivered there. The key drawbacks of the T-54 and T-55 are the critically low level of protection, lack of range finders and ballistic computers, primitive sights and an inadequate gun stabilization system. Last year, Mosfilm Studio gave the Russian army 28 T-55 and 8 PT-76 tanks, as well as other military equipment. Mosfilm CEO Karen Shanazarov said this during a meeting with Russian President Vladimir Putin. According to him, the equipment was stored in the military technical base of the film studio. President Joe Biden intends to bolster U.S. military support to Ukraine in the final months of his administration, U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken said on Wednesday, after Russia launched a sophisticated missile and drone attack on Kiev. The U.S. will continue to shore up everything we're doing for Ukraine to make sure that it can effectively defend itself against this Russian aggression, Blinken told reporters at NATO headquarters, before planned meetings with Allied envoys and Ukrainian officials. Blinken warned that North Korea's decision to send its troops into combat operations alongside Russian forces demands and will get a firm response. He didn't elaborate. U.S., South Korean and Ukrainian intelligence assessments say up to 12,000 North Korean combat troops are being sent to the war. The bulk of those troops were expected to be deployed in Russia's Kursk region where Ukrainian troops have seized a swathe of territory. Russia's early morning missile and drone attack was the first on Kiev in 73 days. President Volodymyr Zelensky has said that Russia is intensifying its strikes, apparently in an effort to discourage Ukrainians from continuing the war, which is approaching its 1,000-day milestone. 
Russia appears to be pressing its advantage as doubt swirls about how Washington might change policy on the war after Donald Trump takes office as U.S. President in January. The U.S. is the biggest provider of military help to Ukraine. Trump has slammed the Biden administration for giving Kyiv tens of billions of dollars in aid and has promised to quickly end the conflict. Ukraine's international backers fear that any rushed settlement would mostly benefit Russian President Vladimir Putin. North Korea's troops in Russia are largely thought to be from Pyongyang's elite Storm Corps, but one ex-member of the branch said he thought North Korea did send special forces, but not its best, according to Business Insider. As questions arise over the quality of Kim Jong-un's troops in Russia, a former soldier who served in North Korea's special forces said they're likely the country's elite troops. Lee Wung-gil, who defected to South Korea in 2007, told the Korea Times, which is headquartered in the South Korean capital of Seoul, that he believed the North Korean men cited in Russia were indeed special forces. They do not appear to be the finest members, however, he told the outlet. Kang Chol Hwan, a North Korean defector and journalist, cited accounts from informants in the North asserting that the North Korean soldiers sent to Russia do not match the media's portrayal of them as elite army members. He claimed that the troop deployment to Russia is merely part of North Korean leader Kim Jong-un's ruthless business strategy aimed at profiting from the war, emphasizing that Kim is primarily focused on how much money he can generate. North Korean troops sent to Russia are not elite army members. Kang said Kim Jong-un would benefit more from dispatching inexperienced soldiers to the front lines as they will likely become cannon fodder. The more North Koreans die on the battlefield, the more money he stands to gain from Russia. The war in Ukraine has turned into a lucrative business opportunity for Kim Jong-un since North Korea and Russia signed a military pact that began with arms and artillery supplies and later expanded to troop deployments. The North Korean regime is infamous for its exploitative remittance policies. Washington and Kyiv, Ukraine's capital, say they believe that about 11,000 North Korean troops have been sent to Russia to aid in the Ukraine war, including some 8,000 dispatched to the Kursk region. There's been debate over how well these troops measure up to modern standards for special forces or whether the North Korean men in Russia are even from the country's prestigious unit. South Korea's defense ministry estimates that the Storm Corps has 200,000 members, a staggering total for a special forces branch. During a September visit to a training base, Kim lauded the division's members as each being worth 100 typical North Korean soldiers. But Seoul has described these troops in Russia as young, inexperienced men sent to be mere cannon fodder.